We're going to be taking a look at this lab, username enumeration via different responses. This is a fairly straightforward lab. The objective is to brute force the username and password box. Now we could try every username against every password, but part of the vulnerability here is something known as username enumeration. It means we can figure out valid usernames without even having to use a password. Just to give you an idea of how this works, let's fire up the lab. We'll head to the My Account section where we're presented with a username and password login box. Now let's try a simple username and a random password. If we click login, we get the response invalid username. Now presumably if we entered a valid username and an invalid password, we wouldn't get the message invalid username. In other words, we can enumerate the different usernames existing in the database simply by seeing whether we get the invalid username response or not. Now, if we take a look in Burp Suite, we can see a copy of the post request that's sent to the forward slash login endpoint. And we can see as part of the request body, we have username equals admin and password equals password. For the username field, if we insert payload markers in the Burp intruder tab around the admin username, we can then inject a range of different usernames to see which usernames return a valid response, which return an invalid username response. To make things very straightforward, Portswigger also provides a word list especially designed to be used with these labs. And the advantage of this particular word list is it's not super long. We can see everything starts with A, so we don't need to wait for as long in order to simply demonstrate a hacking concept. So we copy the list of usernames to the clipboard. If we head to the payloads tab, we can click the paste option under payload settings. So this is our word list of different usernames. We can simply click start attack in the top right. Now the key idea here is that most of these usernames are going to be invalid. And if we take a look at the length of the response, we see that it is 3335. Have a look at the response itself. We should be able to see the message invalid username. However, assuming we get a response that doesn't contain the text invalid username, in all likelihood, it's going to be of a different length because it's a different response. So as these requests are sent, if we filter by length, eventually we'll see a request come in that is of a different length. So now we can see request 70 has the length 3337, different length to all of the other responses. If we take a look at the response, we don't get the message username is invalid. In fact, we get a slightly different message incorrect password. Now we can see the payload for that HTTP request was the username Apollo. In other words, we've enumerated at least one user from the database. Just as a proof of concept, if we head back to the login form, we try the username Apollo, we try a random password, we choose login. Instead of invalid username, we now get the response incorrect password. We know therefore we have a valid user, we simply need to find the password for this user. So let's clear our set of payloads. Let's head back to the position of the payload marker. We're going to delete the payload markers around admin and we're going to replace it with a known username Apollo. We're now going to place our payload markers around the password field. And once again, Portswigger provides us with a list of passwords that we can use as a word list. So in the wild, Password lists are going to be much longer than this. They're going to take a lot longer to iterate through everything. So we have a fairly concise list here just to demonstrate the concept. So we've pasted our list of passwords under payload settings. We can now choose start attack. This is going to be iterating through each of the passwords, but in each instance it's going to be using the username Apollo since we know that this is valid. We can see that the standard length of the response is 3337. So once again, we're looking for any response that differs from the regular response where we have an invalid password. So we can see request 40, that was the payload buster as the password. We get 188 as the length of the response. We can take a look at the raw HTML of the response. We don't really see too much there, but it seems fairly likely that this is the correct combination of username and password. Username Apollo, password buster. Okay, let's give that a go. Username Apollo, password buster. Let's click login. And you can see we're now logged in with the username Apollo. Now, I don't know if this will always be the username and password. Portswigger do generally change their flags. In other words, you may find that a random username and password is assigned upon creating a new lab. So you will need to go through the process to get the username and password. 
Typical ways of mitigating against this type of attack is ensuring that users only get a certain number of opportunities to enter a username and password. The other type of defense is what we can refer to as request throttling. So if a certain IP is sending lots of requests to the post login endpoint, then the more requests that are sent, the more time is required before the next request can be sent. So it ends up making the process of enumerating usernames and passwords extremely slow to the point where it just wouldn't be practical to brute force usernames and passwords. Finally, a good login field is not going to allow for username enumeration. In other words, we should get the same response back from the app whether the username exists in the database or not. You should simply get a blanket response in valid credentials. We don't need to tell the user whether it was the username that was invalid or the password that was invalid because this allows for username enumeration. Okay, that's pretty much it for this lab. Hope it was helpful. Thanks very much for checking out the content and I'll catch you guys in the next lab.